Okay, so we're back at it here. I apologize, people at home. Let's see this kick off on me. Okay, so I would start out with vertically. It's not going negative one to one. It's going from negative five to five. But it really isn't going negative five to five. We have to subtract three to each of these. So we do that vertically, it goes from negative eight to positive two. Now let's do the new part. The new part has this four right here. Horizontally, it goes from zero to two pi normally. Normally it goes zero to two pi, but what are we gonna do? Well, we're dividing by four, so we need to take each of those numbers and multiply by four, times four, times four. So zero, two, eight pi. Okay, horizontally it goes from zero to eight pi. So, we gotta go from negative eight down here at negative eight, up here to positive two, and halfway between negative two and, po and positive two and negative eight is that number, negative three. I'm not gonna end at two pi, I'm gonna end at eight pi. And then I would chop it down. Half of eight pi is four pi. Chop four pi in half, it's two pi. So we're counting by two pi, it's two pi, four pi, six pi, and then eight pi. Okay, this is a cosine graph cosine graph. Tell you what, I'm going to alter this. If I make that a negative, is that going to alter anything I've done so far? So far, no. But right now, since I just changed to a negative, it's going to alter it, okay? We're good so far, though. Where are we going to start? Right here in the middle? No. It's negative cosine, so it starts where? Way down at the bottom. All the way down at the bottom, okay? And we end at 8 pi, way down at the bottom, at negative 8. Halfway through at 4 pi, we're at the high point, which is 2. And be careful there. Some students say, well, at 2 pi and 6 pi, we're at 0. We're not at 0. Where are we? The midpoint, negative 3. Negative 3, negative 3. Again, a lot of students have no problem until they get to the actual connecting these. Okay, and I hate marking people wrong, but it, it should go like this first. It should look like a bell. Okay, kind of like a bell-shaped curve. This. That's it. We can try a few more. We gotta make it a little bit tougher then. How about y equals, um, let's do three cosecant of theta over five minus two. explaining this. Again, this is just has to do with fractions. I'm going to show you guys a way of doing it, but I'm going to show you a shortcut that you don't need to know. So I'm, actually, I never figured it out. A student told me once, that hey, can't you just do this much together? I was like, oh, that's a good idea. Okay, so I'm going to share it with you. I'll do it the way that I usually do it, and then I'll show you the way that a student showed me one. So I would put down vertically, and actually, cosecant, I'm going to put sine underneath it. We're going to do a sine graph first. It goes from negative 3 to 3. So then we still have to subtract 2 to each of them. So it's from negative 5 to 1. Okay. Horizontally, 0 to 2 pi. But we're going to multiply each of these by 5. Times 5, times 5. Horizontally, it goes from 0 to 10 pi. So, let's graph this thing. We're going from negative 5 to positive 1. Halfway through is negative 2. Here's 10 pi. Half of 10 pi is 5 pi. Now, if you're working ahead, you want to stop for a second here, okay? And here's why. You might be going well between 0 and 5 pi is 2.5 pi. 2.5 pi. You're not wrong. But, that's not the way, when you're writing your radians, they're fractions, not decimals, okay? And I hate to be mean, but I'm gonna mark you wrong. If you were to put 2.55, I'd, I'd take a point off. It's only a point, but I, I would take it off, okay? So, here's what we need to do, okay? If I, we're just gonna cut, we, we took 10, we cut it in half. Take five, we can cut five in half. Half of five, don't think on this. You know what half of five is? Five halves. You could say, okay, 
Even two and a half, I'll take a point off because they're fractions, they're not mixed numbers, okay? It really needs to be five halves, okay? Five halves. So put five halves pi. Now watch carefully here, okay? To get this one, here's what we're doing. This distance is the same as this distance. All four of these pieces are all the same slice. So this right here is five halves. I know this says five, but you know what I'm gonna say? Ten. Ten what? Half. Ten halves. So what's this? Fifteen, 15 halves. 20. Twenty halves. And twenty halves is? Ten. ten. So five halves, we're counting like five halves. Five halves, ten halves, fifteen halves, twenty halves. Fifteen pi over two. And again, as decimals, is that 2.5 and 7.5? Yeah, but that's just not the way it's written. It's written as improper fractions, okay? So, sine graph starts right in the middle. So right here, halfway through or right there, all the way in the end or right there. And this is not a negative sine graph, so it's gonna go up like usual and down here. Question on that one. Oh, somebody said it. We're not done, okay? And I hate it. If you were to do this, I try to catch people. If they were like to turn that in on a test, I, if I caught it, I'd be like, come back up here, finish this, okay? You're not done yet, okay? So we need to asymptote a half. Zero and five pi and ten pi. And it go away from the graph. So like that. Oh, one more thing. I don't know if I told you this or not. Then should I erase the sine graph? No. You could, but geez, please don't. It's easier for me to correct it if I can see the sine graph. I just leave it there. Okay? It's more work for you and it's easier for me if it's there. So just leave it there. Okay, let's get even yuckier fractions up here. So far we haven't had hardly any fractions except for that, and that wasn't that bad of fractions. How about y equals cosine of Eight theta. This one's a little different, okay? This one's a little different because, because why? I mean, how does this one look? I mean, compared to all the other ones we've done so far. All the other ones we have theta over something. This is theta times, and what would you think? You're timesing by eight. You'd think it'd do what horizontally? You'd think it would stretch it or shrink it? Stretch. You'd think it'd stretch it. So you're timesing by eight. It's actually going to shrink it by a factor of eight, okay? Now, before we even start this, okay, let's put this question on hold for a second here, okay? We gotta go back to middle school. If I asked you to do this without a calculator, how do you do two thirds divided by four fifths without a calculator? Seven what? Seven what do I do to the first one? Nothing. Nothing. What do I do to this? Two well, what do I do to this? Make a multiply. multiply. Okay, so what you've learned is division is the same as what? Multiplying by what? Not opposite. Not opposite. Reciprocal. Reciprocal. Okay. That's what division is. You guys always took division problems and made them into multiplication problems. Why did you do that? Easier. It's easier. That's the only reason, because it's easier. You made division problems into times problems. Well, what did I say about 10 minutes ago? You always want to have theta over something. You want to have it as, you actually want it to be division. So we're going to make this. So what is, if division is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, what is multiplication? Dividing. Dividing by the reciprocal. That's the same thing as dividing by the reciprocal. Normally, you guys made division problems into times problems because it's easier. I totally agree. Okay? We're going to make times problems into division problems because that's what it, the, it's easier to have theta divided by something in order to do this, okay? Isn't your theta divided by negative eight? Not negative, quit saying opposite. Quit thinking opposite, get opposite out of your head, mm -hmm. okay? Reciprocal of eight. What's a reciprocal? Make eight a fraction. Oh, it's gonna be one eight. Right, so let's write it as the cosine of theta over one eight, okay? If it's not written as theta over something, Write it as theta over something, okay? Over the reciprocal, okay? I'm not gonna write vertically on this one because it's going from one to negative one. I mean, if you really want to, you can, but it's, it's going, the whole thing that's happening here is because of this one eight. Horizontally, it goes from zero to two pi normally, but what are we gonna do? 
Nothing's changed here. Multiply by what? One eighth. Not eight. One eighth. Okay. It's theta over. When it was a four right here, we divide. We times by four. When it was a six here, we times by six. It's one eighth. We times by one eighth. Times one eighth. Times one eighth. So horizontally, it goes from zero to one eighth times two is two eighths, which is one fourth. Pi over four. Two times one eighth is two eighths. Two eighths is one fourth. Okay. So we have pi over 4. I don't know if I've said this this year. I know I've said it in the past, though. What does of mean in mathematics? What's the word of? If I say find 3 fourths of 5 ninths, what do you do? Times. Of means times. So we want half of 1 fourth. What's half of 1 fourth? What's 1 half times? Pi over 8. So pi over 4 times 1 half is pi over 8. Okay, let's, what's half of pi over 8? Pi over 16. So we're counting by 16ths. Okay? So what's going to go right here? Not pi over. We're counting by 16ths. This is 1 16th. It's not what it says here, but this is actually 2 16ths. 3 16ths. 4 16ths, which is 1 4th. 3 16ths, 3 pi over 16ths. Well, all we're doing is counting to 4. 1 16th, 2 16ths, 3 16ths, 4 16ths. Again, I want to make sure we haven't lost anybody here. I had pi over 4. I cut that in half. Times what I have is pi over 8. Cut that in half. It's pi over 16. We're counting by 16ths. 1 16th, 2 16ths, 3 16ths, 4 16ths. Cosine wave starts at the high point, unless it's flipped. Halfway through, we're all the way down here. At the end, we're up here pi over 16 and 3 pi over 16, we're at 0. If that one seemed a little harder, it's just the fractions. I'll show, show these from the side. It really is. It's nothing different. It's just fractions. Let's try one or two more, then I'll give you guys a few. The good news is this. I gave you like 10 problems the first time we did these. You're only getting like 5 today, at the most 5. Which sounds good, but if you haven't already figured this out, when you have less and less problems, there's a reason for that. They take more difficult. They more difficult, they take longer, okay? If I give you an assignment that has 50 questions, those are usually pretty quick, pretty quick questions, okay? All right, let's try this. Y equals, let's do a, let's do a tougher one. How about uh, the cosecant of 7 theta? Cosecant of 7 theta. So. I'll make it a little harder. Negative 3 cosine cosecant 7 theta, because that's a little tougher. Okay. So you don't have to do it, but I'm going to write something under cosecant. What am I going to write? Sine. In something like this, if you really want to make a note to yourself, you can. But at this point, you should be able to tell me that vertically, just by looking at this, you'll be able to tell me that vertically it's going to go from what to what. Yeah. I'm just going to put 3. All right, I, do I like it written as 7 theta? No, no I'd rather have it what? Theta over 1, one 7. Timesing by 7 is the same as dividing by 1, 7. Okay? And we're not doing, you're not going to think we're, you're, we're wrong learning what we did. I mean, we're, we're doing the same thing you learned in middle school, but we're just doing it the other way around. You turn division problems into times problems. We're taking times problems and making division problems. So horizontally, it normally goes from 0 to pi. But what are we going to do? Times it by 1, 7. Times by one seven. And don't make this mistake. Some students get in a big hurry. Well, 0 times 1, 7 is 1, 7. No, it's not. 0 times 1, 7 is 0. And what's 1, 7 times 2? 2, 7. Zero to pi over seven. Okay. Forget the pies. Just forget them right now. Okay. What's halfway between zero and two sevens? 
What's between zero and two? One seven. One pi over seven is a pi over seven. What's half of one seven? One half of one seven. One half times one seven. So it's what? One fourteenth. Just times your tops and your bottoms. So we're counting by fourteenths. Fourteenths. One fourteenth. Two fourteenths. Three fourteenths. Four fourteenths, which is two sevenths. And then a sine graph starts right in the middle, but it's flipped, so it's going to go down here at pi over 14, negative 3, we're back up here at pi over 7, 0, we're way at the top at 3, 14, pi, we're back down at 0, 2, 7, pi. Why? So we draw our asymptote here, and here, and here. You guys agree these seem quite a bit harder than last week's? Yeah. I told you. I told you. That's why I said, make sure you get last week's done because it's going to get tough real quick starting this week. And we're not even done. Because what, we, what haven't we done yet that we're going to do probably tomorrow? Tangent. No. They haven't slid them this way. Okay, back and forth. We still have to slide them. We stretched them. We haven't slid them, though. Okay, let's try one more. Then I'll give you guys, I'll probably only give you four of them to work on. Okay. Let's try y equals negative 6 cosine of 9 theta plus 2. Okay. All right, so I just want to make sure we understand. If this 9 theta, if it would have been theta, over 9. If it was theta over 9, is that is that good? Or is that yeah. no? Yeah. All we do with that 9, it goes from 0 to 2 pi. It wouldn't go 0 to 2 pi. It goes 0 to what? 18 pi. Remember, you times it by 9. You times by 9. So if it's already written as divide, just leave it alone. Okay? We're going to write it as divide, though. So negative 6 cosine of theta over what? 190. So again, if it, if it starts out and the first couple I give you would be theta over something, just leave it alone, okay? Vertically, what to what initially? Negative six and six. But not really. Why? To which? Both of them. Vertically, it goes from negative four to eight. Circle that. Negative four to eight. Horizontally, zero to two pi, but what? Times it by one ninth. Times one ninth. Times one ninth. Zero to two times one ninth is two ninths. Two pi over nine. If I got rid of this negative right here, would I have to alter anything that I've picked, done so far? No. What if that said a secant? Would I have to alter anything yet? Not yet. Okay. All right, I'm not going to change it though. So we have eight. Negative four and half of between eight. Negative four is two. Okay, am I going to put two pi right here? No, I'm going to put what? What are we ending at? Two pi over nine. Ignore the pi. Just ignore it. What's half of two ninths? One ninth. So pi over nine. What's half of one ninth? Zero two, one ninth half of it. One eighteenth. So we're counting by eighteenths. Okay, by eighteenths. Pi over eighteen. Doesn't say it, but this one right here that we have marked is what? Two eighteenths. What's this? You're gonna hate this. I'll write down three eighteenths, but I hate to say it. If you do that on a test, I gotta take a point off. Why? I can simplify it. Okay. Occasionally, students say, "How do you know when you need to simplify it?" I don't want to be a smart alecky here, but you know when you should simplify things? When you can. 
That's what math is, okay? Back in first grade, if they gave you this right here, one plus two plus three, and they said simplify it, if you put three plus three, let's be honest, did you simplify it? Yes. Enough? No. No. You need to simplify it as much as you possibly can. 3 eighteenths is one sixth, okay? Cosine, a negative cosine graph starts at the low point. Down here, halfway through at the high point, at the very end we're at the low point again. Again, so it's a negative cosine graph. Are we at uh, zero at pi over 18 and pi over six? We're at two. And it goes in, out, out, in. These are not easy, not easy. That's why you're only gonna get four of them, okay? Let me give you four questions to do. What we're gonna do also is this. We're still going good. Um, very likely tomorrow, I am gonna introduce to you guys sliding them, which is even harder yet. Okay, that's as hard as it's gonna get though. Okay, that's as tough as it's gonna get. Uh, I don't wanna scare you, but uh, I also wanna let you know about it. Um, You'll probably have a little bit of a little bit of time to work on this tomorrow, if you know, because I don't think you're gonna, you're not gonna get these four problems done before the hour. So there's nothing wrong with doing it at home for homework. Homework's nothing wrong with that. Um, but if you're just like, ah, I'll just do it tomorrow, we're we're, we're gonna cover new material tomorrow also. Um, you know, you won't have a whole lot of time to work on these. So I want to make sure you at least understand how to do these, because if you don't understand how to do these, you're like, ah, whatever, I ain't gonna do anything the rest of the day. Then you come back here tomorrow, you know, you might be even more confused. So four problems to do. Let's label this section 2-4, horizontal stretches. I say stretches, it could have been shrinks, but stretches, shrinks, whatever. Just four of them to do. Uh, let's do sine of theta over 20. Some of you right now can tell me what it goes to. It doesn't go from 0 to 2 pi. It's going to go from 0 to what? Well, it says divide by 20, so do the opposite. It's not 0 to 2 pi. It's going 0 to 40 pi. And those are easy. 40 pi, what's in the middle of that? 20, 10, 20, 30, 40. That's easy. Okay, how about this one? Let's use cosine of theta over... We'll just do sine and cosine because it has. Uh, let's do negative five sine of eight. No, negative eight. Two at the twelve theta plus two. Let's do seven cosine five. Those four problems, try to get at least one of them. I mean, number one, you should be able to knock that one out fast, real fast. So I've already told you 10, 20, 30, 40. One and negative one, there it is. Um, 